Okay, I want to talk a little bit about strings in JavaScript, and specifically escape sequences and Unicode characters. Uh, two things that don't get a lot of discussion online. So, I have here declared five variables, and I want to store strings in those variables, but I want to do it with characters that aren't all English. So characters that aren't part of the Latin alphabet that English uses. So my examples here are, I want to write yes in Russian, so da. I want to write milk in Danish, so milk. Brot, bread in Norwegian. Manana, which is tomorrow in Spanish. And the Japanese word emoji in hiragana. So I've got these variables declared and you can see I didn't use the actual characters like this isn't Cyrillic up here this is a series of escape sequences right here these are escape sequences whenever you see a backslash inside of a string followed by the letter U this means the next four digits three or four digits are going to be a number pointing to a specific character within the Unicode character set. If you go to this URL right here, unicode.org slash charts, we can take a look in there. And here are the latest version of Unicode, which is version 10. All of the characters, all of the symbols, everything that we use in our language, in math, in music, in every written language in the world, all of the characters, currently there's about 136, roughly, 136,000 characters that we use that are defined within this Unicode character set. It's a character set that can be used for anything that we would want to display on a screen. So, every one of these is a collection of a bunch of characters, and there's a number assigned to every one of them. So, we have here the Unicode value and 0434, character 0434 within the Unicode character set is the Russian capital letter D. Unicode character 430 is the Russian lowercase a. So if I was to write this out, if I was to do console.log, yes, in Russian, I'm gonna write out that variable. I'm gonna save that, come over to my console and run this. There we go, duh. This is the Russian word for yes. Over here we've got M, which is the same as in English. At the end we've got an LK, and in the middle we have another Unicode character. So I'm going to write all of these out. I'm going to console log them so you can see what they are. And we've got a Unicode character here where I didn't have... My keyboard is set up to type in English, so I don't have these characters available to me. So there's the O with a slash through it. This is the N with the wavy line on the top of it. And these are three different hiragana characters in Japanese for emoji. So I'm going to write these all out. Now, just completely off to the side here, uh, I don't want to keep writing console.log over and over and over again. So I'm going to create a shortcut for myself, something that you can do yourself when you're writing code. Now, I have now created a variable called log and it is a pointer to the console log method. So now I just have to type the word log and then I can put in the variable that I want. So I'm gonna put the Danish milk and I'm gonna put the uh, Norwegian bread and I miss Oh, there we go, yes. Tomorrow in Spanish, and emoji. There we go. So I'm going to call console.log five times, once for each of these values. Run this again, and there we go. So, da, milk, bro, manana, emoji. So we have all these different Unicode characters. So if you don't have your keyboard set up to support the different languages if you don't want to be switching back and forth between them. You can, within JavaScript, reference all of these characters with backslash u followed by the number that points to it. And the unicode.org website, this is where you can go to search for and find the specific numbers that you want. Or if you have a number, 
and you want to know what character it represents, you can use that and you can search for it. Now, related to this, we have built-in methods in JavaScript. String from char code. So if you know what the character code is, you can pass that number in and it will convert it. It'll tell you what the character is. Or if you have a string and you want to know inside this variable string here, at position 0 or position 1, what is the character that we're looking at? So if I was to say milk, the Danish milk, and I'm going to say my variable name is milk dk, char code at, and I'm going to say at position 1. So this is position 0, this is position 1, position 2, position 3. So at position 1, that's what I want to get. So I'll just write this down, or write this out to the console rather. Yeah. 108. That is the number for this character right here. If I wanted to get... Oh, sorry, that was 2. I meant to write 1. Yeah. L would be the 108. Lowercase 1. Run this again. 230. There we go. Now we're outside of the range. And 0, the M, 109. 108 is L, 109 is M, lowercase letters in alphabetical order according to English. So that makes sense, the ones that we're getting. Now the other way, if we want to go, if we want to take a character and get the string out of it, we can actually take a series of numbers, pass them in. So you can pass in one number or you can pass a whole series of numbers separated. So 0x is how you write hexa hexadecimal numbers. 0, 4, 3, 4. I'm going to log out s, the value of that. There we go, d. So the Unicode letter, or the, the Unicode value, 0434, the hexadecimal number, we want to get the actual string from that number. And that's what gets passed back to us, and so that's how we define it. And the one other thing that I wanted to show you in this video is this, this is a series of some of the common escape sequences. Whenever we start something with the backslash, that means the next character, the one character that comes after it, is an escape sequence. So if I were to want to output, let's say, a quotation mark. So I'm running a string, and I want to have the single quote inside of here. If I did this, you can see the color changed on this. This is not being understood properly. It thinks that here's the start, here's the end, and then I've got this extra quotation mark here. So I want to say yes, I actually do want to write out that apostrophe or single quote. By doing this, when I run it, there we go, I get that single character. If I wanted to put a backslash in here, because the backslash is a special character as well, there we go. There's the slash, and there's the single quote. Uh, we can do the same thing with double quotes. These last three here, this is the new line character, this is a carriage return, and this is the tab. Tab can often be useful when you are trying to format things. So there's two tabs. I will put the letter A, two tabs, and then another letter A, and then we will do a new line, and then a tab, and then another letter A. So let's take a look at what we get here. Okay, so there's the single quote, the backslash, the A, followed by two tabs, another A, a carriage return, a new line character coming to the next line, and then a tab, and then finally the letter A. So that's what this sequence is representing to us.
And that's really all you need to know about Unicode and charcodeat and from charcode. Just remember charcodeat, you put the variable in front of it, and from charcode, it's just the string object that's calling this. You're not putting a variable in front of it, you're passing in numbers right here. Any questions, please leave them in the comments.